Hey everybody, welcome to a brand new episode of Effortless. I'm, uh, oh, Spiegel, I'm Spiegel. Hi everybody. With me is Piddle, as always. I already forgot who you are. Well, it's been a long day and uh, we're very stressed out over here at the ZBN because our favorite company is ruining everything that we love. Uh, today, as you may have already guessed from the uh, title of the episode, is the all Nintendo show. We're only going to be talking about Nintendo today. So if you want to hear anything else, just get out and go listen to some other stupid ZBN show. Okay? Because we're only doing Nintendo Direct stuff. We're not even doing 5252. We're just going to be talking about Nintendo. And we didn't beat anything anyway, so it doesn't matter because we're too lazy yeah. to actually play games. We just complain about them. Yep. We don't play games anymore. We just, we just criticize them. So the day of recording is Friday March 4th, uh, you'll probably be listening to this on Saturday or whenever I get around to uh, actually uploading it. Um, the release of Twilight Princess today. Yeah, in fact, Twilight Princess HD came out. I bought mine. Uh, you had yours pre-ordered, right? Yep, I pre-ordered mine from Amazon. I have, to say, I have to say the Wolf Link Amiibo looks really, really cool. You guys should all go buy one. It's awesome. Um, and I'm really excited to experience Twilight Princess again and remember why the entire Zelda community hates it so much. Uh, but I, I, rem I seem to remember really liking the game when I last played it, so we'll see. I gave it a 4 out of 5. I didn't, uh, but you know. Yeah, um, so let's... So, yeah, Nintendo did a Nintendo Direct yesterday. Uh, they don't do Nintendo Directs very often anymore, it seems. Um, this is actually less than a week after announcing Pokemon Sun and Moon, which I feel like if they had actually saved for this Nintendo Direct, they would have had a lot more, like, big news to talk about, but... It is what it is, I suppose. Yeah, they likely should have saved uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon for this one, just because, I don't know, what if it would have taken some of the sting away. So, if you can't already tell, we were both fairly disappointed by the Direct, right? It had some good points. And we are going to go through it, like, blow by blow and discuss every little thing that Nintendo talked about. That's why this is the all-Nintendo show, because I didn't want the show to go on too long like it always does. So just the Nintendo Direct today. Um, so what did, what did they lead off with? They led off with, they Star, let off Fox with Star Fox Zero. I right? mean, first they led off with Bill Trinan just being incredibly awkward, but then there was Star Fox Zero. So I like those Nintendo Directs where they lead off with a trailer. Uh, and being that Star Fox launches next month, I feel like they wanted to kind of build up that excitement a little more than they did. Um, this Nintendo Direct had a really kind of awkward feel to it, didn't it? Just in the terms of the presentation. They sort of went at it with uh, the attitude of dispelling the negative uh, comments that have been out there on the internet from Nintendo fans. I mean, as far as like Star Fox is concerned, as far yeah, as... Yeah, so let's, let's talk about yeah. Star Fox, right? It, I thought it looked really good. And I have been very critical of Star Fox Zero in the past on this show and others. And uh, I ate my words, and I pre-ordered it today because I think it looks really, really good. It looks so much better than what we saw at E3 graphically. Um, it's going to have branching paths. It sort of looks like Star Fox 64, but with a different control scheme, which I think is pretty exciting. I mean, how could they possibly screw that up, right? Um, well, so that was the concern. It was just like, oh, my goodness, Nintendo is screwing up Star Fox again. They're throwing in gimmicks. And the big complaints about Star Fox Zero is we were seeing so much of the gamepad footage and how the gamepad was going to be utilized. We were getting reports uh, that people who had played the game in its early stages just hated the controls, that the controls are just awful, um, and that they like weren't good at them. And Nintendo just sort of said, you know what, this is pretty much a traditional Star Fox. It's got yeah, your branching paths, it's got your the map that looks a lot like uh, the map in Star Fox 64. It a has lot warps. like that map. Yeah, it, it has warps. Um, it has replay value, it sounds like. like I mean, they flat out said, once you beat Venom, you're going to open up new levels. Yep. Um, and new ways to play. So, and, and they also pretty much only showed R-Wing footage. They didn't show any of the hovercopter footage, which was very slow and not very action-packed, which we want with our Star Fox. Uh, the entire vibe I got from everything they showed was, hey, this is like Star Fox 64, the game, like, 
what which we've is been what everybody for. wanted, right? That's yeah. what everybody's like. Just make freaking Star Fox 64. It's not complicated. And Nintendo's yeah. like, okay, they're finally listening. Maybe. Um, jury's still out, of course, on whether the game is actually good or not. But when the reviews start rolling in next month, we'll see for sure. And once we play it ourselves, of course. This the news really makes me feel a lot better about it, uh, especially yeah. because, like I've talked to you about before, th- a lot of things have to go wrong for this game to not be good. And uh, I mean, first we got Nintendo delaying the game to make sure it's good. And then, I mean, we have Platinum Games, which is behind this game. They're, they're having it, or they have a hand in developing it. So for, for that to go south, it just, there's not a very good chance of that happening. And what they showed finally confirmed that, hey, this is gonna be the Star Fox you wanna buy. Now, maybe they just sort of, maybe they just sort of hid the bad parts of the game and they just showed us the good parts and we're all gonna, we're all, we all get suckered in and we're all gonna buy it and play it and just be like, oh my gosh, this is horrible. But from what they showed to, uh, yeah, during the direct, it, it looks like it's what Star Fox fans really want. And that's that's all you can really ask for, right? Yeah. I mean, so, so my fears, I think, were effectively dispelled. It was a really nice way to start off the direct because I was like, okay, prove it prove that this is going to be, you know, a legit reason for me to buy this. Give me a reason to buy the game basically is what I was saying in my head when I when they started off with Star Fox. And they did. They they gave me Star Fox 64 in HD looking really really good. Um so that's that's that. And they also announced uh that Star Fox Guard, formerly known as Project Guard, would be launched with the game. Uh I'm not really too interested in it. Um, but I know you're. I know you're really excited to play Star Fox Guard, right? It has sort of a Five Nights at Freddy's vibe mixed with a tower defense kind of game. It reminded me more of Night Trap, honestly, on the Sega CD. I you I know, haven't played Night you Trap. You know Night really, Trap. So. Um, but I I mean, for it to be sort of included with Star Fox Zero, that's something that's really cool. Maybe they felt like Star Fox Zero just what might not have had enough value and just would just get blasted by critics for being like, oh, this is only a two-hour game. Because you know Idiots. how everybody feels about game length nowadays. Yeah. Um, even though, you know, I don't care if it's replayable and it's fun. I don't care I if it's it a I think it might it might have actually had more to do with the fact that Star Fox Guard didn't really have enough content to be released as a full game. Not so much that Star Fox Zero didn't. Yeah, but uh, they could still have released it as a Wii U like eShop title. So Yeah. But anyway, so uh Star Fox Guard looks pretty good. I'm not really super interested in it. I'll play it because it's coming with the game, so. Yeah. I, I'm glad that it's coming with Star Fox. Because I, I, I had interest in it anyway. So next up, Nintendo announced that Splatoon is still gonna be continuing to get free updates, which is just insane we're now almost a year into the game's uh, lo- cycle right it's been yeah. out for almost a year still doing updates uh which is really impressive no more stages but it's gonna like rebalance gear uh which m- hopefully makes certain weapons playable again uh they're they're uh they're fine-tuning matchmaking quality this says um so yeah it should be i'm excited it'll get me back into splatoon again at least you know what the best uh news about splatoon was no. The news that wasn't announced, but indirectly, if you look at everything else they did with this direct and the direction that they are taking with their games, what I have been clamoring for with Splatoon is going to be just around the corner. What, merchandise? Merchandise and virtual items. I, where do you see this? I don't understand... When did they announce this? What are you they talking didn't. about? They didn't. That's what I said. They indirectly like announced the future of Splatoon because of everything else that they did during this direct, with all of our problems with this direct, pretty much. Okay, well that's that's interesting. Um, I have, I still don't you, really you know what are you're not talking following about. at all. No, I am not following you. But we're gonna move on. We'll just throw that in the trash can, just like all these other freaking games that we're they gonna are, get to. Okay, for me to spell it out for you, they are nickel and diming Nintendo fans even more. So, what's the oh, next evolution oh, okay. for Splatoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Okay, I see where you're going with that. Yeah, it's coming now. I, I'm sure of it. All right, Wh- so ne- next they showed off, uh, speaking of garbage, they showed off Mario and Sonic at the Rio Olympic Games, 
which I was complaining to you. I we we talked on the phone yesterday, and I was complaining about this. I'm like, nobody even cares about the Olympics before remembering that you're a swimmer. So obviously, you do care very much about the Olympics. Uh, yeah. But are you even remotely interested in this game? You know, I am not. I mean, I'll check out the reviews, and if if it gets a few eights here and there, I think I might get it when it's on sale. The Mario sports games have, I feel, been pr- getting progressively worse since like the early early days of like Mario Tennis and Mario Golf. Yep. Uh, so it's you know, I, I, what is Camelot feel- even doing anymore? Like, I don't even what, know. What happened to Camelot Software? Like they. They were like the brains behind all those great Mario sports games. And didn't, didn't weren't they involved in the um, the Oracle games too? Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. Uh, that was Capcom, but maybe they had some influence on it. I thought they had some, but yeah, they, they made, made the so Golden many Sun games. games. Yeah, they made so many great games in the early like two thousands, late nineties. It was great, um, but I, I don't even know if they still exist anymore, honestly. Uh, but anyway, this game. I don't know. They have rugby in it, which is, I guess, the closest thing we'll ever get to Mario football. So that's cool, I guess. Yeah. Me, when I'm watching, I'm just like, I'd, I'd like a new, I'd like a new like Mario Strikers game instead. Ah, oh, please, just like, Nintendo so missed their opportunity to do, to do a new Mario Strikers for the World Cup in 2014, when the Wii U was like still relevant, and they were like still trying to sell consoles. Um, yeah. All right, and I'll, I'll bring on. up Mario Strikers later too. Yeah, Let's we need to move wait. on. Uh, they announced another update for Super Mario Maker for fans of this game. This is really cool. They added like keys and stuff like that. Um, they added uh, keys and the key doors that go with them, and they yeah. added uh, spikes, pink coins. Uh, yeah, what else? and collectible coins. Five collectible coins. That's it. More costumes. A super expert mode. Uh, you know, whatever. Uh, I mean, what super expert mode that expert mode isn't even more impossible stages? I mean, once you get to a point, it's like it's like when the temperature is 100 degrees. You know, what's the difference between 100 degrees and 110 degrees? It's freaking hot. You know, what's the difference between impossible and slightly more impossible? I don't I don't really get the point of that, but whatever. Yeah, it I feel like it's just going to be like the ridiculous troll levels at that point. I hate troll levels so much. I know. I this is this is still not what I want from Mario Maker. I mean, they're you part know, of the reason I stopped playing Mario Maker is troll levels and autoplay levels. Yeah, and you know how I how I want makers to be able to have full worlds, so that I I mean, think of especially what they added in this content update. Think of what the good makers would be able to put together if they could create like a whole world that interconnects and like has like ten levels. And like themes and stuff, yeah. Yeah, you could have themed levels. You can have your um, your scrolling levels. You have your yeah, your castle levels. So I don't know. I maybe the next Mario Maker game that's going to come out in fifteen years. Yeah. Um, moving on. Then we then they talked about a game that I'm very excited for because I'm obsessed with Shin Megami Tensei, and it's a it's the the crossover RPG that we all thought was canceled at one point. Uh, it is now called, it has the final title, which makes so little sense. It is called Tokyo Mirage Sessions Sharp FE. How do you so, feel about that? I don't know what that even is, but it's going to be super annoying because, like, customers at my at my workplace, like, won't even understand it. They'll be like, how do you, what, do you have Tokyo hashtag fee? I'll be like, no, maybe. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, why uh, didn't they call it hashtag? I, I don't know. Uh, so I'm really excited about this game, actually, because it, it looks like there's a lot of music. It, lo- it looks like a That's like, like a what it is. Concert, it's like an right? idol game. Yeah, it's weird, but it looks really it looks really intriguing. I, I'm excited because I, I love J-pop because I'm weird. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think it looks pretty cool. It's an RPG. It, this says, okay, I'm taking this from eggplant.com. Uh, it is a fusion of deep RPG mechanics of Atlas-made games with players able to command Fire Emblem-inspired apparitions in combat, paired with the dazzling adrenaline of a Japanese pop idol concert. So, it's definitely a Japanese game, just based on that description. Uh, it comes out on June, what, June 24th for Wii U? So, I'll definitely be getting it. Sounds like a nice little fun summer RPG for me to dig into. I don't think it's an RPG. 
Well, it says it's an RPG. I, I don't I don't know. Like I said, it looks like an idle game. So what it's hot I think it'll have Miku? rhythm elements. I don't know. Well, I'm I, I'm excited to see what it is. Um so mostly I, I think for the most part, a lot of the Wii U stuff that we saw was really interesting and you know, with the exception of Mario and Sonic, like the, the Mario Maker update is cool. It's nice they're still sp supporting Splatoon. Star Fox Zero looks great. And then this Tokyo Mirage Sessions game looks pretty good. But now we sort of started to fall off a little bit into that sort of mid-direct lull that they usually fall victim to. Next, they talked about a game called Project Treasure, which was renamed uh, Lost Reavers. Um, it's a free-to-play game. Funded by microtransactions, so I'm out already, pretty much. And it, it doesn't really yeah. look that good either. Hey, it has a free beta, so, you know, you can join in that. Yeah, I don't know. It just, it looks so... Like, the frame rate was, like, struggling in the, in the footage <laughs> they looked, were showing. I was and like, it looks what's like going an early, on? early, early 360 PlayStation 3 game. Yeah, it really does. It does not look very good. Um, like... So, you know. Yeah, just bad animations and textures and... Ev oh, my gosh. It was rough to look at, but I, you know what? They'll, they'll get money off of it. There'll be enough people who just put a ton of money into it. Yeah, you know what? That's what I love in my games: spending money. Yeah. Um, so then after, the, okay. So this was the this was the first really big disappointment in my mind, uh, and it, it just sort of came out of nowhere, very awkwardly. Uh, Bill Trennan just he was talking about Lost Reavers. All of a sudden, he's talking about Paper Mario. And, like, there's just a Paper Mario game on the screen. And if we were supposed to, like, freak out about this and, like, get really excited, it certainly didn't happen for me. I looked at it, got excited, and then I learned about the concept, which is it just freaking looks like Sticker Star, but on Wii U. And that's when the disappointment really sunk in for me. Yeah, that's the general consensus on Paper Mario, whatever it's called, Color, Color Splash. Splash. Yeah. I've been calling it Paper Mario Splatoon Edition. Paper Mario Sticker Star 2.0. It just looks, it just looks kind of bad. Like I, I don't know. We didn't. I really mean, see... he described it as an action adventure, so it's not an RPG. So just that, get that out of your clear, head right away. It's not clear that it's not an RPG, but at no point did they do anything that looked remotely RPG-ish. In the uh, like Japan and Europe Nintendo Direct, it shows that you're not going to get any experience from battles. Ugh. So. Just the, the, see that, and this is what I was going to complain about with Nintendo, right? Is because, and I, I've complained about this before. Why aren't they making games that we want? Or they're making the games that we want, but they're not doing the right things to make them intriguing. I, I it's like, and I said this to you on the phone yesterday, like, like I was saying before, like it's almost like they had a just a trash can of ideas labeled Wii U. And since the Wii U is going away, and NX is probably going to come out this year, they just decided, like, well, we need a couple more games to fill in the gaps this year so that people don't feel like they got screwed. So they just emptied the trash can. They're like, here's Paper Mario Color Splash. It's a, it's an idea we had, like, for the 3DS, and, like, Sticker Star wasn't well received, so we just weren't going to do it. And now it feels like they're just doing it anyway, just for the heck of it. They got to have something, I guess. They don't have to have anything. Like, I, I don't even <laughs> care. They've done, they did this, okay, and I said this, too. Nintendo, when they are preparing to release a new console, right, they always go completely radio silent for like six months to a year on their current console. How many games came out for GameCube in 2006? You have Chibi Robo and like Odama. Like, that was it. That was it for GameCube. Yeah, it was pretty um, much nothing. Did anything come out for Wii in 2011 besides Skyward Sword? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, so I mean, it's like. I'd rather, would you rather have nothing than these like disappointing games that kind of feel like a waste of a good IP? Sort of. I, you know, I don't know what to think because on one hand, I'm like, okay, if I really look at what I'm going to get, I'm getting Star Fox Zero. Absolutely. Yeah, that I, game looks great. That's yeah, not a waste. I already have a Twilight Princess HD in the mail. Um, You're getting Pokemon Tournament too, right? I don't know if I'm going to get Pokemon Tournament. I mean, I'm really not big on fighting games, mm -hmm. and except for Smash Brothers. But even Smash Brothers, I'm not. I didn't get Sm Smash Brothers, so yeah, I don't really know what to say. For for me, like I guess the Wii U. Just as long as I get Star Fox Zero, I'm happy. 
It would have been nice if Zelda had been Wii U exclusive, but I mean, we pretty it's much clearly know it's clearly not going to be now, right? Yeah, it's it's coming in NX. The fact that I guess I'm saying it a little early, but the fact that they didn't show anything Zelda U related, they didn't even mention it in passing, means that it's it's coming to NX. They're not going to show anything on it until they reveal the NX and go, if, oh hey, here's Zelda U for the NX. Or, if I recall well, correctly, U. if I recall correctly, they they did the exact same thing for Twilight Princess when it was coming out on GameCube in like 2004 uh, or 2005. Um, it kind of went away for a while, and then we saw that they had like redone the Twilight Realm, and that was like that was like the only piece of news we got on it until 2006 when they announced it was coming out on Wii also, and I feel like that's the exact same path they're taking with this like 10 years later. Here's yep. Zelda. Here's Zelda U announced in 2014. Looks amazing. Everyone gets super hyped. It goes away forever, and we don't see it again until they announce their new console is coming out that year. Um, the only difference is, is that we don't know NX is coming out this year. We knew Wii was coming out in 2006. But we, but just by avoiding it for so long, and you're 100% correct, uh, kind of implies that they're just waiting to unveil NX, and then they're like, and here's what Zelda looks like on NX. Boom, there it is. You know, so I, yeah, I think that's exactly Yeah, because it'll look nicer. It'll run it at a nicer frame rate. It'll just, yeah. And, why and, not? And, and to be clear, I don't really have a problem if they want to put it on NX as a launch title. I'm getting the NX at launch because I'm sure it's going to be good. Wii U is great. The only problem is it's being bogged down with a bunch of games that I just would rather didn't exist, like Paper Mario Color Splash. It's like, I'm just... Do we really need that? Does anyone really... Is anyone really super hyped for Paper Mario Color Splash? Let us know in the comments because I feel like I'm just totally being a, a jerk right now if, if you are. You're not. We're still looking for a good Paper Mario since it's been twelve years now. So, well, I mean, you like Super you Paper like Super Mario, Mario was Super Paper Mario was actually good in some ways, but it wasn't it's not an RPG. It's yeah, it's not an RPG. It was good in some ways. It wasn't as good as Thousand Year Door or Paper Mario sixty four, but you could at least say it was good. Since then, what have we had? Well, I mean, we we would disagree on that. I don't think Super Paper Mario is that good, but. But anyway, that's it was hilarious. Really I don't know what you're talking it, about. It was hilarious, but I just didn't care for the gameplay. I felt it was too. We're getting way off topic. We're moving on. Uh, I mentioned I mentioned Pokemon Tournament earlier. I'm actually going to buy it. Uh, I had pre-ordered it before the Nintendo Direct, but after the footage they showed us yesterday with you know Machamp and and Lucario and Gengar, I was really convinced that this is going to be a really interesting, unique, fun fighting game. It's going to have support Pokemon, so it's not just the guys that you're fighting with. It's really, really cool looking. Looks great in HD. Uh, I'm just super excited. We've never gotten to play as the Pokemon fighting each other before. It's it's just a really unique thing to be able to it do. It looks really, really good. I Like I said, gorgeous, I'm not going right? to get it, but it looks good. Uh, yeah, I love that you can actually play as the Pokemon for once. When I come to uh, visit and we do that live in person effortless uh, early May, which uh, may have been the first time I even announced that right now, um, we should play Pokemon Tournament and, and see if you like it. Sounds good to me. Then you should buy it and we should play online. And we can also play Star Fox two player mode. Oh, yeah. One, one of us shoots and the other one flies. That's kind of fun. Yeah. I actually sort of like that they're throwing that in there. That's like noob mode. Uh, I sort of thought about it though when when I saw the gamepad, I was like, couldn't you do this with two players and like have a sort of like two pilots where one is a bomber? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so then uh, they kind of they started to get away from Wii U a little bit. They uh, they announced or they mentioned Twilight Princess. Um, that's great. Whatever. Um, they and then talked it went about to the 3DS territory. They talked about my Nintendo a little bit as well, which they didn't really announce anything. We kind of already knew everything that they were that they had mentioned there. They mentioned Mi Um They're still very vague about this whole thing, which is weird because it's supposed to like launch this month, right? So why is there so much information we don't know yet? Who knows? And also, why are platinum coins worth less than gold coins? <laughs> Who knows? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, then uh, they announced the Mario and Friends Amiibo Challenge, which looks quite a bit like the Mario vs. Donkey Kong games. Um, if you've played those games, uh, and th there was a recent one, uh, Tipping Stars. Uh, if you played Tipping Stars, you should be very excited for this game if you like Tipping Stars, because it looks very similar, 
I think it looks really cool. I like the idea that the amiibos have their own like special powers. Um, yeah, and this is kind of the amiibo game that I was expecting that we would have a while back that utilized all the different amiibo figures that you could possibly have in your collection. Yeah, and granted, it looks it only, good it, for amiibo collectors. And it only uses a you know a select few of them, but it's nice to have another application. Um, it looks like it's it's a free game, so you know. You just need those amiibos. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, I mean it's essentially just a Lemmings game. So now we're getting a into the, the 3DS territory, uh, and they mentioned this that uh, the oh I'm gonna I'm gonna go on a rant here too, um, that they are going to be bringing Super Nintendo games to the new 3DS exclusively. I can't. Now, th- this whole announcement just really pissed me off. That, like, that's all it did for well, me. To, to it be just clear, made me really angry. To be clear, I'm perfectly happy with the fact that they're bringing Super Nintendo games to 3DS. That's perfectly fine. Uh, I'm also perfectly fine with them being like, if you don't have a new 3DS, it's time to upgrade, because here's a reason. Totally cool with that. They're, they're no, well I'm not. Right to do it, it. It's it's a clear cash grab. It's it's clearly trying to get people. It is that not a clear Already cash grab. have Nintendo 3DSs to put down more money for a new Nintendo 3DS. It's not a cash grab because they they have said themselves that they cannot get Super Nintendo emulation running properly on the original 3DS. Whether or not you want to believe that is up to you. But I can't imagine the 3DS, which is not a very powerful system. It was released in 2011. Very similar hardware to the DSi. I, I seriously doubt they could get it running in such a way that would make it look good and like keep the frame rate steady. I, I just don't believe it. I, I really think it's just a cash grab. That's me personally. I just... <sighs> I, I don't buy what you're saying because the Super Nintendo is more complex than the Game Boy Advance games, and they were super reluctant to release Game Boy Advance games on the Virtual Console emulator on the original 3DS. So I think yeah, there's but a they, le- they were able to port Game Boy Advance games, and I know em- emulation is different from like ports, but I mean people were using their PlayStation Portable to emulate Super Nintendo. Yeah, games. and those games ran like crap on PSP. I don't want to play that. And I mean, you can already hack your Nintendo 3DS to play Super Nintendo games, and yeah, there are some issues with it too. But I mean, this is Nintendo. This is the hardware manufacturer. They know their system inside and out. I, I just feel like I, they, I they should understand. be able to get emulation working properly. And they couldn't. So here's their solution. I don't know. I, I I'm just believing their company line that they just couldn't get it running properly on 3DS, or at least up to their standard which is a very high standard, given that they still won't freaking release GameCube games on Wii U, even though the structure is there. Anyway, I'm still I'm still really mad about the whole GameCube game thing. We were promised in, like, 2013 that they were coming. They, they never came. <laughs> yep, they're just, they're just going to gloss over that now. Yep. Well, they're never going to mention it again. Yep. Um, so, real quick, they did announce that uh, nine games, nine Super Nintendo games were coming in the next, like, month-ish. Pilot Wings, Super Mario World, F Zero, Super Mario Kart, Earthbound, Donkey Kong Country, A Link to the Past, Super Metroid, and Donkey Kong Country Two. Man, that's a fantastic set of games. It's a great lineup. That is no a fantastic lineup. It. Yeah. And uh, but here's here's what made me so irritated. This would have been a perfect opportunity. They just mentioned the My Nintendo thing, for them to be like, and if you have a My Nintendo account linked to your Wii U and your 3DS. If you already own them on Wii U, you can download them for free on the 3DS via the new cross-buy method or whatever. Or say, well, you know, we couldn't quite like make that work properly, but you can get them for a discounted rate of like a dollar or like two dollars or something, and you can just play them on the go on your new 3DS. But no, Nintendo didn't announce anything like that. They didn't even touch that subject. They're just like, they're going to be available. And that's it. It's like, well... That that really pissed me off because like I have already bought all these games on Wii U. I'm not gonna buy them again. Yeah, I'd rather play them on 3DS, but I already have them. And you're not gonna you're not gonna like give me a five dollar discount. I understand that they do need to put more work into creating like another emulator and making sure that these games work on other systems. But there is no excuse with, I mean, with the account system now that you can't have both. You can't, yeah, just have everything be cross-buy. 
and that was the that was the thing right there. Like I'm used to Nintendo nickel and diming me for every set I have regarding Virtual Console, but they had just talked about my Nintendo and how all your like Nintendo stuff is going to be connected now, and they're still not doing cross buy. I don't understand it because the competition is doing it. I, well, I, I Nintendo, mean, Nintendo, I guess I really do understand it. Is Nintendo is just really taking advantage of the core consumers that they still have. That's all there is that, to That's it. all it is. I mean, because they realize that you're going to buy Super Mario World five different times. I mean, I talked to someone yesterday who's like, yeah, I'm really mad about it too, but I'm probably going to do it anyway. I'm like, that is exactly the problem. You guys are irritated with Nintendo, but you just buy everything anyway. And it's like, can you just have some self-restraint and like legitimately call out this company when they're having a problem or when there's a problem with something they're doing? Yeah, I'm ah. just dis- I'm disgusted with the entire yeah, the the entire showing of what they're going to do for virtual console on the sort of Super Nintendo games on the 3DS. So I was hoping that like when NX came out and they con- they're going to continue virtual console service cuz it's a virtual gold mine as I've called it in the past and but and I was hoping like okay, maybe if I already own the games I can get them on NX for like super cheap or for free even as like an introductory thing for people who buy the NX at launch. But now I'm like super doubtful that any service like cross buy is ever really going to be implemented properly with any Nintendo product. And that's that's pretty infuriating as someone who pretty much buys everything Nintendo puts out. I'm not going to buy it again. I will buy it once. I'm not going to buy it again. Just help me out, Nintendo. Why would you do this? Like, because people buy it. I know why they do it, but it's just it's frustrating. It's disappointing. So following that, uh, they announced a, a new game by Game Freak, uh, the Pokemon developer. It's kind of a weird game, but I, I kind of like it. I'm it's interested ca- in it. It's called a Pocket Card Jockey. I don't really have a lot to say on it. It's just that it looks really interesting. You kind Simple- of simplified version of solitaire but with like sort of action elements where you're racing a horse and then you like breed your horses like you do in pokemon to like get better horses i bet it's going to be addicting and fun i mean i used to just open up solitaire sometimes on windows xp and blast through a few hands how much do you want to bet it's going to have microtransactions i don't think it will there's no reason for me to think that i just have a feeling and they didn't really touch on it yeah they probably would have brought that up like when they first revealed it right yeah well we'll we'll see i mean i'm interested in it i'm definitely going to keep my eye on it i can honestly say i've never been interested in a game with horses before or a game that the main premise is play solitaire while riding a horse for me the price is going to be a big factor (laughs) it just it just sounds ridiculous doesn't it i love it yeah it makes no sense but did Pocket Monsters make sense? No. Well, yeah, it's yeah. an RPG, but anyway. It didn't make sense at the time. It was like, uh, what? What? You Monsters in your pocket? In your, in your pocket? <laughs> um, All right. So next we had... Uh, Azure Striker Gunvolt 2. I don't really have anything to say about this. I, I never played the first game. Um, did, you, did you play it? Nope. Looks sort of like a Mega Man game. Yeah. And, I mean, really taking... Key- notes from Mega Man now because uh, one of the characters in it can steal the boss's powers and use them. So it sounds like Mighty Number no. 9 and Mega Man and this is the same exact thing. Honestly, it looks better than Mighty Number no. 9. Mighty Number no. 9 is a game that has gone through just hell in this development process. Like they keep delaying it and the director of the game is like a scumbag who's like taking all the Kickstarter money and I like I don't know, the game's probably going to get canceled or something funny. And just, like, everyone's going to be really mad. It'll get released, but I think it's not going to be good. Um, then they talked about Fire Emblem Revelation, uh, which is going to be 20 bucks. Um, I haven't played Fire Emblem Fates. You've played a little bit of Fire Emblem Fates. Uh, what's Quick impressions. Uh, I've played Conquest, and I haven't really played it much just because I'm I'm stuck. Like, I, I can't beat this level. I just keep dying. I hear the game is, like, hard as F. Is that, is that accurate? Fire Emblem Conquest is hard. I'll say it right now. It's really, really hard. Uh, there are, like, if I bought some of the DLC, I could boost how powerful some of my characters are. But you know me. I'm not going to I'm not gonna buy the DLC. And, and speaking you, of Fire Emblem Fates DLC. You just segued perfectly into what I wanted to talk about, which is Bill Trinan uh, used the phrase season pass 
in his uh, presentation of the Fire Emblem Revelation DLC. Uh, did and he? I think you've got it mixed up. He he only mentioned the map pack that you could buy. No, no, no. He said season pass. He said that was and for you can, Hyrule Warriors Legends. You're right. You're right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he, they brought up DLC and then they went to Hyrule Warriors Legends, mentioned the phrase season pass. And it's not like Nintendo's never done a season pass before, but this is the first time I think they've ever acknowledged the words like season pass. Is that as soon as they said season pass, I was pretty sure I could hear you having an aneurysm. Oh, I was having an aneurysm. I was in the I was on my break at work, and I somehow the timing was incredible. I, I got off uh, to go on my break and as soon as the direct was starting, and by this time the direct was probably halfway over. My break was mostly over. And my boss came into the back room, and I was just like, I, I was literally like hitting myself in the forehead with my fist. Like, I just can't believe that we're going the season pass route. I'm so sick of season passes, and I am not buying Hyrule Warriors Legends because it's a cash grab, and I'm not buying a season pass for it. I'm done with Hyrule Warriors Legends on Wii U. I don't need more characters. I'm not going to buy them, and I've had enough of it. The, the end. <laughs> hey, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Also, this I game think, looks like this Hyrule game looks Warriors, like freaking crap. It looks horrible on 3DS. I Who would ever buy this? I think it's do well in Japan, but I don't think it will do nearly as well over here in the states. Weirdly, Hyrule Warriors didn't do that well in Japan when it launched for Wii U, and everyone thought it was going to be a big thing because of Dynasty Warriors, but it just didn't have the impact that I think people were expecting it to have over there. I don't think it sold a million units. And uh, generally huge Japanese franchises, people always jump on board. Dynasty Warriors always does like a million in Japan. I don't think Hyrule Warriors led. Or I don't think Hyrule Warriors did. People will only get Hyrule Warriors Legends for Linkle. She's pretty hot. Yeah, best part of Hyrule Warriors Legends. Yeah, uh, best part of Hyrule Warriors is looking at the girls. <laughs> right? Oh man, this show's really going downhill fast. Uh, well, I guess we know what our thumbnail for this week is going to be. Hot Hyrule Warriors Legends girls. Yep. That's what that's the uh that's gonna be the title of the episode. You know, nobody clicked on our, our clickbait episode. Like we got a lot of views on Mick Pick Two and the and the Ellie Kemper one, but we didn't get uh we didn't get nearly as many views last week. Crystal just I I didn't pick a sexy enough pose of yeah. I don't think Crystal is really relevant anymore, unfortunately, uh, because she's not even in Star Fox Zero, which makes everybody really upset. At least me. Makes me really happy. What makes you happy? Why? Yeah, just get rid of her. She shouldn't no. be in Star Fox Zero. Are anyway. you one of those? Are you one of those like haters that hates on Star Fox Adventures for no reason? No, I love Star Fox Adventures. Okay, good. Like I've I've played through Star Fox Adventures more than I have played through any Zelda game since Majora's Mask. Really? Yeah. Wow. I I really like it. I mean, it has a really good uh, sort of art direction uh graphics look incredible even today they still hold up really well don't they the the music is by david wise so music is I forgot that he did the soundtrack for that fantastic. game fantastic yeah um thorntail's hollow thorntail hollow music is who just sends shivers down my spine it's so good so and, yeah and i know that game was made by rare and it was originally a different type of game but that's kind of the direction i want nintendo to go with their franchises and that's why i get so mad when i just see like paper mario sticker star 2 it's like, can you do something creative that people actually want or at least do the same thing that's b made you successful in the past and not like weird, bizarre spinoffs with gameplay gimmicks that suck? Like like Paper Mario Color Splash? It, looks, it just looks like crap. I don't want to play that game. I really don't. Well, you know, when you go digging through the recycle bin of your Windows desktop, that's what you get. Yeah. Uh... Then they announced uh, Disney Art Academy, which I'm not, I don't, whatever, it's whatever. I, the I, only I interesting thing about Disney Art Academy is it pretty much confirmed uh, a previous leak, which tells us that what's You're right. coming in 2016? The NX. Yeah. So and, that's... Uh, if you if you can find me the link uh, that has that uh, all that information, and in fact, um, they, they did mention that there was an Amiibo game that used Amiibos. Uh, coming to Wii U and 3DS, and that's the the other Amiibo game that they mentioned earlier. Yep, whatever so it's called. We got that. Yeah, so uh, I'll put the link in the description for your perusal. Uh, if it wasn't obvious that Nintendo is releasing NX, this direct made it completely obvious because they didn't announce any Wii U games that were coming any later than June, uh, 
except for Paper Mario Color Splash, which is just like a fill the gaps type of game, just like Mario and Luigi Paper Jam was. Yeah, it's just a sometime in 2016 kind of yeah. game. Uh, then they then they talked about Bravely Second. Um, you liked Bravely Default, right? Or was that somebody else? It Bravely Default had some good parts of it, like the world music was just had this sweeping epic melody to it. Uh, the I mean, it had some interesting classes. Uh, the art direction I really liked, like when you went to the cities, but the story was just so uninteresting that I couldn't keep playing. From what I understand, there's there's going to be a class in this game called the Catmancer, which is that was like, the coolest part about. I that thought it was really thing. funny. It's like you, the cats learn the enemy's skills, and then you give the cats a treat, and then they like copy. I love them. it. It's like, like who comes up with that? It's That's so freaking awesome. Japanese. It's ridiculous. I love stuff like that, though. That's so awesome. Like now, now I just want a Catmancer game. Yeah, just, like I want a game where you play as a cat and you're just like a cat, like but not like Bubsy, like a yeah. Better now cat we game. need Final Fantasy Cat Edition. Final Fantasy Bubsy Edition. So uh, yeah, the next the next ZBN fan that goes back through all the like last fifteen ZBN videos and finds Bubsy and all the thumbnails, you win a prize. Because he's in every single one of them. <laughs> That's a little fun fact. Except the effortless ones. Um, then, oh, here we go. Then we finally, finally, I got something else to make me excited. And and it was weird because it kind of it kind of came out of nowhere for me. I knew Dragon Quest Seven was happening. Um, I never really looked into it. But this game looks so stylish and so cool that uh, Dragon Quest Seven: Fragments of the Forgotten Past uh, is coming out on 3DS. Which, by the way, the 3DS is just a frickin' monster with RPGs. It's an RPG machine. I'm really excited for this game. It looks really cool. I'm really excited for this. Like, I've never even looked at Dragon Quest before this. And it's gonna come out in summer 2016, which is awesome. I love portable games that come out in the summer. Because not a lot comes out in the summer. And portable RPGs, that is exactly what I need to get me through the long summer of no games. Not your backlog? Screw that! I'm never playing any games <laughs> in my backlog ever again. Um, I, I'm just—I've been playing Mario and Luigi Dream Team, and it's just so. Uh, it, it's not bad. It's just like, this is so boilerplate. I just don't want to play it. I really don't want to go through it, and that's that's why we haven't beaten anything. It's just because we're both in big time gaming slumps right now. Yeah, I, uh, I can't believe I'm in such a slump right now. It's unbelievable. You you started off the year on fire, and I think maybe you just burned yourself out too much. I was having fun. I just I don't know what happened. Yeah, I just uh, stop, stop playing games. So they talked about uh, Monster Hunter uh, Generations, uh, known as Monster Hunter X or Cross or whatever in Japan. Um, I don't know. I'm not really into Monster Hunter. This is cool for people who are fans because uh, I mean we knew it was getting localized. We just didn't know when it was coming. But they say summer 2016, so that's pretty cool. I tried Monster Hunter back with Monster Hunter Try on the Wii. Man, yeah, it's it's just not for me. I couldn't get into it. It was just it was sort of it felt kind of bland to me as far as games well, like that go. There's 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 absolutely zero story really in the Monster Hunter games. It's just about like going out and fighting and killing cool monsters, which right. I mean, you sounds can, awesome. Like you can do that in Xenoblade Chronicles though, and there is a story and it's better. I love Xenoblade Chronicles and it I played it exactly the same time that Monster Hunter uh that I played Monster Hunter 4, um which I just I couldn't get into it. It was just like, well, eh, I don't know. Well, it it'll be good for some people. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, it's really cool that uh, that this is happening so soon. I thought we were going to wait quite a bit longer, like early 2017 probably. But anyway. Um, there are so many Monster Hunter type of games nowadays. Uh, I mean, it's su it's hyper popular in Japan, right? So Yeah. So, some of that Japan stuff. Japan just... has like a ton of Monster Hunter clones out there right now. Oh, yeah. I, I, I can't even believe. It's like Call of Duty over there, Monster yeah, Hunter. Yeah, like Dragon's Dogma, I believe, is one. Yeah, and the Vita has several Monster Hunter ripoff type of games. Freedom Wars. Yep, Freedom Wars. Um, but anyway, so then we're gonna move on. There's a game. Uh, oh my gosh! Oh, we finally got to this part of the show. I was actually really looking forward to this, and now I'm kind of dreading having to talk about it. There was a game uh, that was announced last year at E3 that made everybody very, very upset, and it was called Metroid Prime Federation Force. 
Uh, and the weirdest thing I thought of all about this whole, like, we knew they were going to talk about it. They had to. But that Bill Trennan actually acknowledged, uh, we announced a game at E3 last year that left fans with some questions. I was like, holy crap, they're basically just acknowledging that everybody hated it. And that nobody wants it. And unbelievably, and I'm going to say this exactly the same way I said it yesterday, I cannot believe that a Nintendo Direct made me want a game l even less than I already wanted Metroid Prime Federation Force. It just looks freaking awful. You know what I call it. Federation Farce. Yeah. And I actually started calling it Federation Force uh, by itself because I do not believe this game deserves the Metroid Prime title. Uh, and they, they mentioned that yesterday too. They're like, it is part of the Metroid Prime universe because this. And I'm like, yeah, but the gameplay is not similar. And it looks horrible. And I Everything do not want to. I do it. not want to associate one of the greatest trilogies in gaming history with this farce, for lack of a better word. Uh, it just looks awful. And I'm gonna rant again right now, real quick, because they mentioned that like they had started development for the DSi, and uh, I was like, yeah, because it looks like a DSi game. It looks like you canceled. A, I just bit my tongue. It looks like you canceled a DSi game and you threw it in the garbage and then like five years later you dug it up and you're like, we're going to resurrect this because I don't know why. And that's why we're getting this game right now. Seven years in the making that Federation farce has been. This seven it's like, years. It's like freaking Duke Nukem forever. It's just awful. It, the, it's, the graphical style is completely in contrast with the rest of the Metroid Prime series and just the Metroid series in general. I mean, Metroid Prime Pinball had more of that Metroid Prime feel than this game does. I would like to say that Metroid Prime Pinball is one of the best-looking games ever released on a handheld console. I still think it holds up really, really well. And, yeah, oh my gosh, I just, I can't believe that they are actually releasing this game. I mean, they have to at this point. At this well, point, they can't it's just, just like, be like, well, just they suck can't it up cancel and release it. it. Yeah, I mean, I was talking to you about... How do you damage control something like this? And they tried their darndest yesterday. You know how you do damage control? You just shut up and don't even mention it ever again. <laughs> yeah, you turn off comments and you turn off upvotes and downvotes on the YouTube video of this Which game. Which is exactly what they did. They yep, got they rid did of it the, within yeah. like hours of releasing the footage because the yeah it, the amount of hate that Federation Farce is getting was just astronomical, which it deserves. I mean, we have been waiting six years for like a new metroid game even no no, no, no. Let, let me let me correct you we have been waiting nine years for a legitimate new metroid game I, metroid I'm other like, m does not consider count. other m an actual metroid game which most people don't people have been waiting yeah now nine years for a classic metroid game we've been clamoring for a 2d metroid game for how long since it, since Metroid uh, Zero Mission, and it's really. another it's another example of Nint like does Nintendo really not know what we want, or are they so obsessed with doing their own thing that they're just like, we don't even care what you want. We're going to tell you what you want. The absurd thing is people are dying for a new uh, classic like 2D Metroid. I mean, I think it would sell like really well. Axiom Verge. You have games. Song like of the Deep is Metroidvania. That's coming out this summer. Ori and the Blind Forest on the yeah. Xbox One is a uh, metroidvania type people of game. want people want metroidvania they really do and nobody does it better than metroid so it's like what's ah it, it blows my mind on like so many levels that they could make a game that's just balls like this one is that's the way i can describe it it's balls i don't want to play this i don't want to play blast ball i want to play metroid prime or super metroid it's just a really sad state of affairs for the Metroid series. And you know what's ridiculous is, well, the hard thing for me to stomach is after the last two Zelda games, I, I had sort of, Zelda was no longer my favorite franchise. The Metroid series is my favorite franchise because of, yeah, Super Metroid, Metroid Zero Mission, Metroid Fusion. They were on, Metroid Prime they were on Trilogy. quite a roll. They did Super Metroid, Metroid Fusion, Metroid Prime, Metroid Prime 2, Metroid Prime Pinball, Metroid Prime Hunters, which was okay, and then Metroid Prime 3. That is a ridiculous run of excellent games for a yeah. franchise. So Metroid just boom. Completely oh, and I forgot I forgot to Zelda mention for me. I forgot to mention Metroid Zero Mission 2. Zero Mission was great. Yeah. It was such a great re remake. Uh 
and now it's just like what happened? Did everybody in charge like just get completely drunk and just like, oh, we're gonna make a game where you're a, a robot? It's weird that Nintendo is just so streaky with all of their franchises, except for Mario. I mean, Mario has the main line Mario games have continued to be worth playing and all Pokemon. throughout the years, and Pokemon and Zelda too. I, I think Zelda is still mostly hit i don't i I don't think there's that many zelda misses i I think zelda has really taken a hit just because they're continuing to release like essentially the last generation zelda games i mean they're they're always the zelda games are a generation behind now i'm not exactly sure what you mean because i because twilight princess was a gamecube game coming out when like xbox 360 PlayStation 3 were really ramping up and doing well. That's a well. fair point. That's and, a fair point. And then you have uh, this latest one, Zelda. I don't know what we're going to call it, call it and, now. And Skyward Sword at that point was dated too because it was the last game on the Wii. So yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And, you know, uh, yeah, so they kind of are in a weird place. I just think handheld Zeldas have been fantastic uh, in general with the exception of Phantom Hourglass. And I liked Spirit Tracks more than everybody else in the whole world. So. See, so even Zelda had a lull with, like, Phantom Hourglass and just being a generation behind um yeah I mean, maybe now, you're right now metroid is hit in the lull uh donkey kong country like disappeared for a long time and then it came back and watched this is uh, watch donkey kong go back into just no man's land star fox for so long it's like star fox, hey, hasn't, now, had a, star fox hasn't had a like triple a excellent game i mean you can count adventures if you want but it's not really a star fox game since star fox 64 yeah well now we're getting a new star fox game that Maybe hopefully, it finally brings it back. Maybe it'll bring it back. it back. I hope so too. I really, I'm really rooting for Star Fox Zero now. I, I'm, I've gone all the like. I've taken all my words back. I redact everything I've said about Star Fox Zero. I really want it to be good. I want it to be a success. So yeah, me too. I have gone completely the opposite direction. Anyway, we need to move on. Finish the show up. Got a couple more things. Uh, they announced Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix is coming to uh, 3DS, which is the that's the compilation they released in Japan, right? Yep. I'm really excited for this because I tried Rhythm Heaven on DS and I hated it, but I learned that there's an issue when you play a DS game on your 3DS, like the timing isn't quite right. So like your rhythm has to be absolutely perfect or you can't even play it. It's like completely unplayable. Hmm. This may just be like a myth, but that's like I couldn't play Rhythm Heaven and I generally consider myself to have really good rhythm. So I think I might have been victim to that. Well, yeah, you play an instrument, so I hope you have good rhythm. Yeah, I'm a freaking bass player. I better have good rhythm. Uh, I'm playing a show on on Sunday the 6th, by the way. I'd say you guys should come to it, but nobody actually lives anywhere near me. It's going to be fun, though. Where where are the uh, bass riffs to start out this show with, like, a little Nintendo vibe? I, I don't know where I would find that. From you. I'm not going to record something like that. <laughs> that is not that is not worth my time. This is effortless. Too much effort. I, I'm not freaking trying anymore. I'm freaking done. Uh, okay, let's let's wrap this up. So Rhythm Heaven, uh, Rhythm Heaven's a good series. This is a nice little piece of news. Um, and then they announced a, a Kirby game, um, which a lot of Planet people are re- Robobot. A lot of people are really excited about this, and I I guess I can see why. I mean, it looks like a good game. I just I have trouble differentiating the Kirby games on 3DS. As soon as they started showing this, I was like. It, it looks like the uh, the other one, Kirby Triple Deluxe, and I know it's not, and I'm gonna get a lot of flack for it, but you know that's just what I thought. I'm like, I'm, I'm not really interested. No, it's just like every other Kirby game, and that's not to say it's gonna be bad. It's gonna be completely worth playing for some people. But it's but... Surpri- it's surprising that they sort of chose this moment to reveal it. Like, I feel like they had better 3DS announcements earlier on that they could have ended the show with. Like, for example. Monster Hunter Generations. That would have gotten a lot of people excited to, to reveal at the very end. But they chose Kirby. Uh, I don't know. I guess I, I guess I just didn't really get that. I think Kirby is a really good franchise for newcomers to gaming. Younger because gamers, it's not, yeah. it's not very difficult. Um, I mean, you can just fly past pretty much every enemy if you want to. And again, it's not to say that it's bad. It's just not really what we were looking for, I guess. Yeah. I Well, for... Most core gamers, Kirby just doesn't really matter that much. All right, so that was the Nintendo Direct. Um, do you want to like rate it out of five? I didn't really think about this before we started doing this show, but might be a good idea. 
Um, if I had to rate it out of five, I'd give it like a three. I think a three sounds about right. It's really hard because there's so much bad to it. It's just there was a lot of I mean, nobody ever expects Nintendo Directs to be kind of just middle of the road, not very interesting. Some nice announcement because. Nintendo has set this absurd, ridiculous standard of the Nintendo Directs that they did in, e- uh, the, in uh, 2014, where every Nintendo Direct was like, oh my gosh, they're going to announce some new huge Smash Brothers thing, or we're going to see more Zelda U maybe, or they're going to show us more of, you know, whatever. We got Majora's Mask in 2014, uh, Nintendo Direct. We got Pokemon uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire announced that year, I believe. Um so it was just like every direct that year was just like boom, here's more stuff. Boom, here's like crazy good stuff. 2014 was a really good year for Nintendo, uh, but we just haven't really had that since then. Yeah. Uh, before we go out, I need to make one more complaint. <laughs> okay, I feel like uh, I've ranted way more than you in this episode, so you're, you you're have, well with you, me. You, right. I've just let I'm you very go. angry. I'm I'm just uh. And this is about Federation farce. <laughs> okay. And that is that. This is a game getting developed by Next Level Games. I I actually feel like the game will probably be sort of fun if you play it the way it's meant to be played. But it's not the game that we want right now. Um, and it just feels like such a waste to me that Next Level Games is making this. I mean... Instead of, for example, a new Mario Strikers game, which they yeah, have done well, excellently I mean, just, in the just past. Yeah, I mean, just an example of Or next Luigi's level games. Mansion Dark Moon, which is another fantastic game. Yeah, they made Dark Moon. They made Punch Out, the Punch Out um, sort and of. Wii, yeah. Yeah, reboot. Uh, they made Mario Strikers Charged, which is just, which was such a great game. I would, like, that's what I want from them. I'd rather have Mario Strikers Charged for, like, the 3DS like a new Mario Strikers game on the 3DS that I can play online than this local co-op garbage. And one more question. We still don't know what Retro Studios is doing. No idea. They're are making they... an NX launch title. Metroid, maybe. I mean, hope, it, I hope to God it it's Metroid. It has to be, right? The Nintendo's going to come out of the gate at E3 and be like, here's our console. Here's Mario, Zelda, Metroid, launch window. Maybe all on day one. <laughs> it would just be insane. The place would just explode. Yeah, especially you imagine? if they throw out some of the, like, some people are speculating that they'll just uh, port over um, Super Smash Brothers That's to probably the gonna NX happen. Too. That's probably going to happen. They, they left way too many sales on the floor to not do that. Yeah. I mean, if they're able to do that, it, NX could be huge. NX so. is, uh, man, we are setting ourselves up for massive disappointment at this year's E3 because it's going to be like, here's Nintendo Land 2, and there's a new Mario game. Here's NX. It's uh, it's a slightly weaker Xbox One, and it has industry-leading potato chips that come with it, like in yep. the box. The NX will have its own Kinect, and they'll relegate Retro Studios to Kinect. <laughs> <laughs> Nintendo Kinect duty. Ninnect, we motion plus plus, we motion multiplication. Oh man, <laughs> oh man, we, we I, music. I thought this was a really good effortless. I, I really do. I I feel like we really ripped into Nintendo, and I feel a little bit better. And if you guys, if you guys like, are angry at me for the things that I've said, please sound off in the comments. I would love to argue with you guys about this. So I'm just really passionate. I love this company and I want to see them do great things. And I just, I haven't seen it in a while. And I'm just, I, I'm anxious. I want to see more good stuff. I know they're better than, than Paper Mario Color Splash and freaking Metroid Prime Federation Farce or whatever we're calling it now. So they'll, they'll release something eventually. This is just a lull. Hey, we get Star Fox. I mean, what more can you ask for? I mean, Pokemon Tournament, Star Fox, Twilight Princess, that's quite a lineup of games to get within the span of, like, a month. So, uh, I guess yeah. I can't complain too much. I can't complain too much. It's just, it's hard not to associate Nintendo with great games. I know. And so, when, I... they, when they release, when they go through a stretch of releasing, like, some great games, it's sort of, it's, it's a tough position because... I mean, they could release some great games and just ignore the, the crap, 
Yeah. And then everyone would just be like, well, I played this great game. Now my Wii, U's gonna, my Wii U is going to collect dust for the next six months. But like with this, it's you have these great games, but it feels like they're getting drowned out with all the junk, like the Mario Tennis game for the Wii U. Or It goes back to what I said earlier. Would you rather have nothing and like, you know, feel like your Wii U is just collecting dust, but then every couple months play this fantastic, amazing game? Or would you rather just get like lots of little filler that you don't really want to play, but you buy anyway because you're a Nintendo fan? That's what it feels like they've been doing last year and this year. Whereas yeah. in 2014, it was like Mario Kart, wait a while, uh, Smash Brothers. You know, it's, you know. So you tell us, listeners, what would you prefer? That or the other thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. So thank you, everybody, for listening to this show. I, again, I feel like we've topped ourselves again. I feel like every week, every week we do a show, it's like, the ne- oh, that was our best show ever. I feel like this was a really good show. Very focused. We don't usually focus too much on effortless. Um, but uh, thanks for listening. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Spiegel Lee. Uh you What else? Follow me in the comments. Yeah. You've been getting in the comments. I love it. I see you in there all the time now. And uh, oh, so. you know what? I promised that uh, we do a shout out to one of our uh, viewers on the last episode. So I got to do that right now. Uh, if you're still listening. Oh, crap. I got to load up the video. Vamp for a second. I need to find this guy. Because I can't remember who so, it is. So while Spiegel looks that up, I'm going to mention a few non-Nintendo games that you should maybe take a look at. Uh, one of them is Super Hot on PC. And that is a cool little shooting game. First-person shooter where when you are not moving time stops and when you are moving time goes forward so sort of a delicate balance or delicate balance of dodging bullets that are flying your way while you you know throw katanas at your enemies and smash them into gazillion pieces or throw your weapon at their head and watch them drop their gun so you can pick it up and then shoot them at point blank so check that out a uh, short game but it was made in a, one of the seven day game jams and they made it into a fully-fledged game. Uh, Another game is Stardew Valley, which is a sort of Harvest Moon type of game, but um, it's a game where people are really liking it, and it's they sort of have just a one more day kind of attitude when they play it, and you know, next thing you know, it's four o'clock in the morning, and you have to get up for work at six o'clock in the morning, so. Nice. Check Um, that one out, too. So the the guy is a, a guy named Siloco, or maybe it's a girl. I, I don't actually don't know. But um, they said that uh, we asked what people's most anticipated games were for the year, and uh, they said that um, Zero Escape Three and Persona Five, which are the sequels to my two favorite games of all time, and I, I called them out because I'm like, you have a fantastic taste in games. You're one of my new favorite commenters. So Siloco, good for you. You have great taste in games. Yeah, I still think Siloco is just another alt for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's it for Effortless. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, my wife is, like, standing in the door, so I have to talk to her real quick about something. So I have to end the show really quickly. Thank you for listening. Subscribe and stuff. For Piddle, I'm Spiegel. Have a nice thing. <laughs>